Good morning, y'all. Um, let me make sure I can get this in case you have any comments. I want to try to make sure I'm live and on the right page. I, I went live on the this page when it was supposed to be for the Artisan Market the other day. But let me get this up. There you go. That way, if y'all ask any uh, questions or have any comments, I can look over and see them. Um, I got this move that up so I can see everything. I got this amazing casting resin off of Amazon and I don't remember how much it was but it wasn't too much or I wouldn't have bought it. Hey Shanna, I, and I've never tried this before. I, these are IOD molds which if you're in the furniture painting industry you'll hear a good bit about because they're a you know, a good locally owned, you know, two women owned company, two sisters on it. And I tried these and it was a fail with this uh, paper clay before. So depending on how much resin I accidentally pour here, we'll see whether I'm gonna have an, any spots left for this. But from what I understand from trying to research it a little bit afterward, I think I had a bad batch of this paper clay because you're supposed to be able to just like put it down in there give it a few minutes and pull it out and then you know stick it on your piece of furniture and part of what i intended when i got ready to do this today was to make these pretty molds and then immediately put them on these pumpkins that i got at the dollar tree and then paint them with the molds on them um to make them look all fancy and, and do all cool but I don't have any glue. I cannot believe I'm at work and I don't have any glue. So I'm gonna make them old so we can share that process together and see how it works. And I'm gonna paint the pumpkins, but I did read the instructions that came with, with the uh, amazing casting resin and you mix it 50-50 of both of these bottles, which it must be gonna make a million molds from the amount of this stuff in the tiny little cups that we have here. But it, uh, anyways, it, and then I have these little flimsy molds. I got these for real cheap on uh, Amazon. They came from China or something. I don't know. I didn't know much about it at the time whenever I got them and I still don't know much about them but I'm trying to learn and share that information that I learned with you. But anyways I'm likely not going to be able to stick them on the pumpkins today. I'm going to paint these pumpkins and I'm going to pour these molds but I don't know that I'll be able to put these molds on the pumpkins and paint them. One thing I read in the instructions on the Amazing Resin is if you're going to paint it, you need to paint it right away. So uh, it says if you're not going to paint it right away, that you need to spray some paint on it right away so that it will adhere better later on. Don't know what all that means, but since I can't, I don't have any glue, I'm going to try to stick it. I'm going to try to stick it with, uh, with and I thought I brought it out here with um, DIY's liquid patina because I know you can decoupage that but I don't know if you can glue with that I don't know that for sure but um, I may just wait and get some glue but I'm gonna make these today anyways but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and then put a coat of paint on them and then I'll just have to come for another video tomorrow that shows putting the the whatever comes out of these the molded thing out of these onto the pumpkin and putting the second layer of paint on and waxing the pumpkins on all that so it'll just be two videos so nothing's all lost but here's here's my bag full of pumpkins as many as would fit in this thing there's one two three four five in here i've got another big one there and i couldn't resist these little ones that are already pretty on their own uh, and i've got three of those so let's try this resin thing first move this out of the way and I'll put a link to this in the uh, in the comments later in case y'all are interested in looking at it a little closer look they gave me three of these little cups I guess that's in case you lose one um, that's pretty good of them to think of that and gave me a couple of these little popsicle sticks for stirring and I have this cute little coffee cup from Java Joe's and I'm just gonna uh, pour and then mix in here and I'm gonna try to do only a tiny amount. Another thing that was really odd that it said was, um, can you see those good? Was that you're gonna let it sit to dry and it only takes five to 10 minutes and it heats up as it dries and it starts out as a yellow color and then as it starts to dry, gets white. And then when it's really dry, it's really, really bright white. But it said that skinnier and smaller pieces actually take longer to cure than the larger pieces so if i was making a you know a whole ceramic pumpkin it would it would take five minutes and these are liable to take up to ten 
So somebody might need to uh, hold me to that and tell me when it's been five minutes and been 10 minutes because I won't have a, my clock is the phone and the phone is in the ring light. But I'm excited to try this. I don't know if y'all have seen any of these pumpkins that, I mean, they're really, really fancy and I've been seeing them and I'm like, where are they getting these pumpkins and how in the heck much must they cost to be that fancy? I'm not, not going to spend that kind of money on fancy pumpkins. And then I'm like, oh, I know what I can do. I can make those molds and I'll take those molds and put them on the pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I did hope I would find larger ones than these. I don't know if you can tell the size of this. It's bigger than a women's softball, but it's definitely probably the size of a, a, the original Nerf ball or something like that. It's maybe a third of a size of a basketball. Okay, I'm gonna put my glasses on. Even I don't have a contact in my right eye, so even the glasses don't do me much good, but let's go up to the, let's go to the tablespoon. We'll do as many as we can do with a tablespoon, and we're supposed to do it 50-50, so there's a tablespoon of the yellow one, and it says, make sure and don't mix this in styrofoam. And I'm guessing that's because it says it gets hot. And it says it's good to, and my molds are a little bit cool. This is the silicone stuff and they were here in the building. But it also says, uh, you know what, that if it's gonna harden, I probably should pour the other one in this one. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, it says you can preheat your molds, but um, I'm more of a flying by the seat of my pants kind of girl, so we just gonna do this. Then it says to stir and make sure to scrape down the sides of your lid so there it all is in there. And I'm sure you can't see it because this light brightens everything up. Hey Deanna, hey Regina. So now I'm mixing this up. And it is turning a milky color just in here. I'm probably not supposed to whip bubbles up into it, but I didn't read that. So what I'm gonna do is look first and see the ones that I think are deep enough to look good on my pumpkin and pour them first, those for sure. And it looks like this and this are actually just alike, but this one's awfully thin. I accidentally bought two sets of the same thing when I was buying. And I like these outer curly cues, but I think that's pretty dang intricate there. So now it's turned clear. I've mixed and it turned milky, and now it's turned clear. It's scraping down the sides, and I'm ready to pour. Make sure it's flat. I sure hope this works. It's leveling out in there. So far, I like it better than I liked the paper stuff. And I've got a splinter in my finger up here yesterday so Eric bandaged me up I don't know if y'all can see that but he put liquid bandage on me at first he sprayed some kind of stuff on there then he put some liquid bandage on me and then he uh, put a regular band-aid over that and then he put some of that bandage tape over that so it's already been through washing my hair and shaving my legs this morning and everything else and hadn't hadn't came loose yet so I guess I'm bandaged for life I can't tell personally whether it's leveled out on top there the way you would with the paper clay but um oh gosh y'all which ones do I do let me do these feathery ones this is not real level right now it is taking a little, ooh, it's hot. I can feel it being hot in my, warming up in my hand. It's like one of those um, hand warmers if you've ever wore them to like ball games or, you know, I'm not a hunter, but I'm sure hunters probably use them, but I put them in every pocket when I go to cold winter ball games. It feels like that going on in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and do this deep one because I don't know that I have enough for it, but I wanna see what it'll come out like. for another small one. 
Okay, well, it's slowly coming out. There's still a little bit coming out. So this was two tablespoons of it that I mixed up, which would be an ounce. And it's barely dribbling out. I don't know if it's going to finish on this one or not. It's already starting to harden there. Let's see if I can smooth it on there. Okay, if somebody thinks about it, tell me what. Look at that. They're already turning white. Can y'all see that? The thicker ones, the thicker ones are already turning white. The thin ones are not. That's really crazy. But I guess it's going to level out that surface. So even though it's not leveled out across there, I didn't use my stick and level it out across there. It's still going to be pretty level. So I'm going to set that aside and check it in five minutes and grab a pumpkin. Oh, well, no, I said I was going to do this paper clay. Please don't let this be a mess. I'm going to put what's left over of this. I'm sure I'll wrap this up real tight and then put this in a Ziploc to use because I'm... I'm wanting to see, I made a video this morning, but I haven't, I don't know if it was too dark, so I haven't published it yet. I'm going to redo our uh, spare bedroom, and it has a very, very plain headboard and footboard, I'm not, it doesn't have footboard, very plain headboard, nightstand, and a little dresser thing, and I was thinking, and I'm going to paint them for sure, I'm going to paint the whole bedroom and the trim and all that, but I was thinking about using some of this mold like that top one there and just going under the straight lines of the of the actual like headboard and on the dressers and putting a strip of that across there to make it look more decorative i'm just kind of kneading this down a little bit and trying to find one of these decorative ones that may look good on my pumpkin that one actually looks like a pumpkin, but I really think it's too big for my pumpkin. I'm just going to make one of these so that we can compare the difference. Because this is, I'm wanting to see this today anyways. I'm wanting to, I was thinking that one, but I'm going to go with this twirly gig one right here. Because I'm trying to do a, like a shabby, chic, country. I have a quilt in there that Eric bought me at uh, Cracker Barrel for Mother's Day a few years ago and with like all the flowers and everything on it and it's kind of like an off-white color and looks old and vintage and pretty and all that and you know this is a secret i'm going to tell y'all when your husband does something nice for you go overboard with the thanks and i have a whole story i'll tell you this one day if somebody will remind me it's about a little stuffed animal but anyways the idea is you go overboard with all the thanks so that they want to do more nice stuff for you in the future to get that to get all that thanks and stuff from you some of that using some of that reverse psychology on them and i don't want to tell you the whole uh stuffed animal story without having it in front of me because i still have it at home and and it, it, it was it wasn't a fail it, it was a backfire <laughs> but i still love the stuffed animal and i love that he did it and i don't know that that it ever got me more more uh more gifts just because I went overboard with how much I loved that one. I'm going to use this other popsicle stick. Can y'all see what I'm doing there? And try to mash this all in real good. I want to make sure it gets down in those crevices really good. I'm excited about this. A lot of times, you know, you go and you buy uh, furniture and you think, oh my goodness, this has the most beautiful wood carvings on it and all that. And then, you know, next thing you know, part of it's scuffed up and you look under there and it wasn't a wood carving at all. It was like some kind of white resin stuff showing from under the wood looking paint. And, you know, after you paid $5,000 for it or something. And uh, probably uh, that type of resin, like right over there, and it went through a mold, probably a machine mold, probably not like I'm doing here, but uh, by hand. But, um, that's how it's done and they it it looks like real wood pieces and it looks like really fancy expensive molding i don't know if you've been to lowe's or home depot or wherever and pricing the price of nice molding lately but it ain't cheap we actually have a machine that we can uh that makes molding but you have to buy what are called knives to go in it to cut each special shape of the molding and the knobs are like 150 dollars a piece so you may as well buy the molding. 
don't know how long I'm supposed to leave this in here. Should have read it ahead of time. Easy to shape. <laughs> Air dries in one to three days. Well, well, well. Can be painted after it's dried with any type of paint. Non-toxic, lightweight and durable. Pieces may shrink slightly. Uh, here's what I've seen with other people using this though that, that I wanna bring up. They demold these after after just a little while. You don't like leave it in this thing for three days. But they, uh, you want this kind of smooth because you're going to be wanting to uh, glue it down on your piece later. But they demold these when they're still relatively soft like this. And say you wanted it to go around the curve of you know uh, a ball that's on your you know uh, headboard or whatever or the pumpkin in this instance while it's still pliable you can wrap it around there glue it down and then you know leave it to turn it up and leave it to dry so that it doesn't fall off and then it's molded it's stuck there and it has then taken the round shape which after you know I'm not sure after these resin ones dry whether I'm going to be able to uh, mold them around my pumpkin or not I have no idea I'm learning but um, anyway, so I'm gonna set that aside for a minute, close up this paper clay best I can for now, and let's get the paint and the pumpkin. I really wanted a bigger pumpkin, and I really wanted a plastic pumpkin. Uh, these are styrofoam, and but I also more than that wanted to get one at the Dollar Tree and see what I could do with it. So. Wish me luck. Here we go. Ooh, that was slick. Oh, I got that slick stuff all over my fingers. Put that over there. And let me give you a peep of, uh, try to hold it way up there, of how these are looking. Looks like, there it is. Right now, it is sort of a milky white, but I'm going to try. Let me, let me chunk that pumpkin aside and see if I can get this biggest one out of here. Oh my goodness, I'm going to turn down this light just a tad and see if y'all can see better that way. And I'm going to stand up. Da -da -da -da. Can you see? Oh my goodness. Uh, you can tell around the edges where it overwent just a little bit but I really don't think once you paint that that's not gonna matter and right now these edges are a tad flexible enough to where I could possibly mold them to this pumpkin to where when it dries it'll be semi stuck on there I'm gonna do that I'm gonna stick it can you see that all the comments are kind of in my way I can't tell if y'all can see it How cool is that? This, I'm gonna pull off these. Uh, oh, how cute. This is a little feather looking thing. I made that, I'm so proud of me. <laughs> this is a thicker one, so I will have to wait until I get another contact to pour a whole lot of these, but I could probably take a Sharpie or pay one of the people here who don't have an eye issue to take a Sharpie to cut because it's still a little bit pliable to cut that stuff off around the edges where it was like sticking up above the mold a little bit. I'm so excited. I'll try to bend that down. I'm going to use this one pumpkin to try to give all of them a little bit of a bendy shape. This is two more of those feathers. It's just popping right out of there. I worried about like whether I needed to have some kind of cornstarch or something in there. How cute that is. I'm, can you see? I'm just sticking them on the pumpkin to try to round them out just a little bit. Here's a, that one, this is the one I was trying to make at the very end with hardly no stuff left. It still worked out though. Okay, a few more here. That's a pretty little twirly gig that would look nice on a pumpkin. Let me put this on one of the little ones. And it is definitely still uh, pliable enough at this point to kind of, I'm so mad that I don't have the dang glue.
Isn't that pretty? Y'all remember I just went and got my nails done the other day? I'm haggard. They, they, they don't make a manicure that can live through what I do in a day. Okay, just a couple more. Let's see what these look like. This is, it feels like gum coming out of there. It's wild. Like those, uh, that one's perfect. I didn't even over pour it. Look at that. That is too dang cool. I'm just so thrilled. Around the pumpkin. Like that, they used to have at Halloween, they used to have some candy that was like partially wax and it was soft, sort of like the fake teeth and all that stuff that you could, uh, it had a funny smell to it too, that you could chew and chew and chew and chew. It probably was all wax, probably toxic from <laughs> back in them days. Nobody cared. We had candy cigarettes in my day. Okay, so there they sort of are, just stuck to the pumpkin, trying to get the rounded to them as they dry. I'm so excited about that. These are just sitting here. This pumpkin was too big and these pieces were too big, but I believe that the, uh, from what they're feeling like right now, that I may be able to, if I get a good enough glue, I may be able to get them to lay down. That's gonna look really cute if it, works how I want it to. I don't know if this is ready or not. Y'all ready to see? This one probably needed uh, cornstarch or something. It's cracked right there. I cracked this piece, but you know, I am brushing it a little bit. But that would then sit to dry and then you would just glue a bunch of these back to back onto a piece of furniture and it'll look like it's had that wood molding on there the whole time. So I'm gonna kinda sit this aside to dry. I'm so thrilled with that resin. That I, so the whole, the whole experiment was worthwhile. Let's grab one of these Dollar Tree pumpkins. I don't know, you know, they have, if everything's in there is a dollar, how come everything in there has to have like a tag on it? They, they got to spend a lot of money on all these tags. Oh, well. <laughs> this one has two tags. How about that? Okay. I've been seeing everybody uh, have pumpkins. We do the Teal Pumpkin Project that has to do with ha making sure that, you know, we're a house that has... Uh, Halloween treats that are safe for children with, uh, I didn't get me any water, with food allergies. And uh, so I'm gonna go with, I'm, one, I'm going with muted colors, but I'm going with more teals and greens because that's that comes from my heart. That's important to me. Hey Dana, hey Carlin. I'm gonna have to pour some of my drinking water in this little cup to have something to rinse my brush off with. Good water, by the way. Sports water. It's uh, got some electrolytes in it. Keep your electrolytes balanced. I just grabbed a handful of brushes, and I don't even know which brush would be the best brush to start with on this. I'm going to start with this Apothecary. That's the color that I painted a, a set of a coffee table and some end tables in there recently, and it's a very pretty color. And I got this thing here job down in it. Okay, should I just use the chip brush and let's get her on there? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dampen it just a tad. Wish I had something and I'm fixing to have something. I'm gonna stick this in the top of this because I'm gonna paint these green things later anyways. I'm gonna drop that in there so I'll have something to hold it by. Oh, 
it looks like the paint's going on it so far. I wondered if it would stick good. Years ago, I don't know how many people know I'm a, I'm a licensed florist. In the state of Louisiana, you have to have a license to be a florist if you're going to work with uh, fresh flowers. They call them fresh and permanent, where we would call them real and fake. Uh, but they're called fresh and permanent. And uh, I got in a some styrofoam crosses you know you back then it was real popular to ribbon wrap them and then you know make a floral arrangement on them there wasn't as much of the um you know of the resin stuff wasn't really around yet then whenever i had my flower shop so i got in some of these styrofoam crosses and i wanted to paint them and so I got some spray paint and I went at it and then they disappeared. <laughs> the spray paint ate up that styrofoam. They, they were, uh, I think they cost me something like $25 a piece and that was, you know, in 2000 probably. So 18 years ago, that was a, a lot of money for me to spend and I wanted mine to be fancy. And, and you know, we, like I said, we used to wrap them in ribbon to give them a color and I thought what you know I could have more colors and save time if I could just spray paint these and I don't know if that was a blonde moment and everybody else in the world knows you can't spray paint styrofoam but I didn't but I do now and these are styrofoam but they have some type of orange paint already on them so that's what made me think and using this is clay based this th this was another reason that I, that I decided to try this with the DIY paint is this is a clay based paint there i mean there's other you know chalk and minerals and pigments and and things in there but the main element of this paint is clay so when this hardens i'm thinking knock knock you know what i mean that this is going to be a hardened residue on the outside of this pumpkin and that i will have created something i can use from year to year out of my Dollar Tree pumpkin and had some fun doing it and got to share my time with y'all how lucky am I so we shall see now I have no place to put it down the in the flower business I would have had uh, a piece a big piece of styrofoam over there like a sheet of it and it would have had like big toothpicks on it to where I could actually sit this up on one of those and it would uh, hold it I'm gonna, put it, I'm gonna try this I'm gonna try to balance it on this little cup if that's not the best thing I do all day I've got a good day coming okay so there's one pumpkin and I'm gonna uh, since I didn't bring myself my big thing of water in here just blows me away it's gonna be sitting here somewhere because I don't forget stuff like that um, I may forget my last name and where I parked my car or to turn my car off I don't usually forget my water when I paint um, I'm gonna wax these what I'm gonna do and, and you know like I said I'm experimenting they got a big load of these at the Dollar Tree if anybody else wants to try it but um, what I uh, forgot what I was going to say. Oh well. So now I forget what I'm going to say too. One time when we were at our other location of Get Healthy, I had my car was in the shop, my air conditioner was out or something like that, and I uh, had a rental car. This is really telling something on myself here. Yes, uh, Carlin, it is wonderful. I can't see. Thank you uh, on the info. And I uh, was in a hurry to hurry up and get to work, running late because I had to stop and get the rental car and all that stuff. And I uh, got to work and we served lunches and all that kind of stuff back then. And normally we parked across the parking lot in the center of the parking lot. That's where employees parked or either out the back door on the side where Dollar Tree and all that is here locally. And but I was, you know, running late and I knew they needed my help. So apparently, I didn't remember this part. Apparently, I pulled my car up right to the front door so I could run in and help. My rental car, I should clarify. 
and we had, you know, that was probably nine that morning, and uh, we had a customer come in like two or three o'clock in the afternoon, and they're like, is somebody in here driving that little red car outside? And we're like, no, and they're like, it's running, and it's been out there running a long time, and I'm like, huh, what silly person leaves their car out there running all that time? I looked at it, and I'm like, no, man, I don't know who that belongs to. Oh, my God, y'all, it was my rental car. I left it outside the front door running all day long till, like, 5.30 that afternoon when it was time to close. And I went outside, and I'm like, where's my car? And then I'm like, oh, my goodness, that was my rental car. Thank goodness I didn't blow up the engine on the rental car. No telling how much gas I used. But, yeah. I don't tell that story to too many people. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. But we still get a laugh about it, and it's, you know, 10 years later now. This is our 10th anniversary here at, uh, at Get Healthy in Java Joe's. I can't believe it's been 10 years. This uh, stem on the other end is kind of wobbly, and I'm holding it by that stem. The paintbrush idea wasn't as brilliant as I thought it was on the other end. This paint dries so fast, though, and I'm going to put another coat, and then I'm going to use a dark wax on it. I think I was talking about that earlier, too, to where it's going to be a little bit of a shadow through the indentations of the pumpkin. I got a stack of these cups. I'm running out of running out of little places to put pumpkins. Okay, that was mint chip. And you probably should not contaminate, you definitely should not contaminate your jars of paint like I'm doing. I'm trying to just paint out of the lid of the ones that I pick up here. And these are paints that I use together all the time and these are just in the little sample sizes. So I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I'm gonna continue to have a good time painting. Okay, I love this color too. This is called Skeleton Key. Oh, thank you, Carlin. This is called Skeleton Key, and it's sort of a, a muted blue-gray color. Hey, Mary. <laughs> There's Mary sneaking through. I may or may not get to use the Skeleton Key. Here it goes. There you go. And it... That did give me enough to use out of the lid, I hope, so that I'm not contaminating. Will the massage bed bother me? Ma'am? Will the massage bed bother No, me? it won't. Okay. Yep, yeah, no, enjoy. Mary's on her lunch break and she's gonna go and relax on the hydro massage a little bit. I'm so excited about my little pumpkins. Is this, you know, it don't, it don't take much. It does not take much to excite me. My husband thinks I'm high maintenance. He has no idea how low maintenance I am. He says the upstairs, which is where I keep my stuff, is gonna cave in. <laughs> that it, it just, houses are not built and meant to have that much stuff up there. I'm like, well, it is what it is. Because I ain't, I ain't slowing down anytime soon. He could take out my dresser. He could take out my nightstands. Take out the television because it's not like I use it. He could take out my armoire. Probably take out my whole bed and put me a mattress on the floor. But we ain't taking out my craft supplies. <laughs> That's the way I feel about it. Take out all, leave the necessities and take the rest. Oh, I love this color. This is way, This is almost the color that I'm wanting. If you saw me talking earlier about the bedroom walls, this is almost it. I want it to be a little bit paler than this, maybe a little 
it a little tad more of a the mint chip added to it or something like that but this is pretty dang close i may bring this well it's going to be on my hand so i guess i just bring my hands uh to sherwin williams later and because i'm going to get used their uh wall paint to paint my walls and this is pretty dang close to the color i want i think it's still uh, you know, even though I'm thinking the shabby country cheek and the, or chic and the flowers on my, uh, bedspread and stuff that I'm wanting to match are, you know, of course, muted pinks and all that stuff, but I'm not, I'm not wanting all pinks and I'm not wanting bright teal. I have a bright teal front door. I have bright teal rugs in my kitchen and I, I have that color in there because it is my favorite color, but on this bedroom, I want it to be like pleasant and warming and inviting and, and romantic and just you know remind you somewhere between Little House on the Prairie and whoever is famous for shabby chicness. Hey CC, thank you for joining me. I'm pumpkin painting today. And they're beginning to be everywhere. Those first two, the mint chip and the apothecary, have almost dried to the same color. As soon as I'm going to paint the stems uh, brown with a little bit of golden ticket, so as soon as one of those is completely dry, I'll bring over uh, one of those really quick. But I, I really, really, really wanted to be able to uh, to paint the. The, these things that I made Can you see that one and I'm gonna have to put it because it said you got to put a coat of paint over them so I'm gonna do that real quick right here uh, I really but I, I I'll get some glue at lunchtime I'll get some glue and I really need to finish these purple uh, nightstands that I'm working on this afternoon uh, but I will glue these things there it is painted I'll glue these things uh, to these pumpkins as soon as I can get some glue. Yeah, as well since I got this paint on my brush, go ahead and get it off on these. Because it did say that if you want your paint to stick good and you're not gonna paint it right away, to put a base coat of paint on it so that the other paint will adhere better later. So, I'm gonna listen to that, adhere that to that advice at least get some paint on here. Hi. Good, thank you. You too. I'm excited about these little bitty ones for the little pumpkins too. That's really cute. And these did bend pretty well. So I think they, they will glue pretty well to that. And once I figure that out, I'll probably glue one set on a pumpkin this afternoon, just once I get the glue at lunchtime to see, because I'll have to make, you know, several more sets of this stuff. Uh, if it looks good on the first one, I'll have to make several more sets to put on the other pumpkins before that'll be completed. Never be afraid of a little paint. Paint is magic. You can transform anything. I'm just wiping a little bit of this off in here because of that contamination issue. Okay, I wanna go ahead and go with this. This is uh, vintage linen. I've got still out, I've got this green, gypsy green, and I've got this vintage linen. I really wanted to do a couple in the white. Oh wait, I've still got another one in here too, so we'll see. I'll do a couple in the white. I'm gonna do it that way. Now I'm doing the bad thing again. I'm hoping that I, I you know, I'll kind of glaze this and it'll be a little bit of an off-white after. But I'm wanting to get, you know, and it's probably going to take a couple of coats. Orange is a pretty, uh, and especially with as porous as this styrofoam is, orange is a pretty, uh, you know, 
bold color to cover, but look how well it's covering. I mean, honestly, that's pretty dang good for uh, the very first, first coat of paint. Y'all just don't tell the paint police that I'm double dipping. Where did you want a Dollar Tree? The stems were in them. Uh, see, see, these are these are the stems that that are in the pumpkins already. Uh, I did see where somebody else uh, was doing some pumpkins, and she pulled these uh, styrofoam stems out and put uh, just got like sticks out of her yard and stuck them in there and it was super duper cute but uh i'm not at home i'm uh at work and we don't have any sticks outside so i'm sticking with the stems that are in there and i'm not wanting mine to look as rustic because i'm gonna put the fancy molds on there if they stick if not i'll go to plan b and i'll be out of my yard digging sticks in a heartbeat we do what it takes. Oh yeah, this definitely, y'all wouldn't mean it probably wouldn't be able to see that up there, but I'm definitely, I'm scooping out of this lid now and a little bit of the green that was on here is coming off in this white. So I definitely would have contaminated that whole thing of paint and pour a little more out in the lid. Now this lid will be on there for eternity. But it won't be green. You know, these are just like going to be for sitting around the store for, you know, working in, in our fall displays or maybe in the window display or something like that. So nobody's going to be eyeballing this up close anyways. And if they were, well, they're not my kind of person. Uh, so it's not that important, but I am gonna, you know, put a second coat of paint, of course, because I do, even though I may say a bunch of silly things half the time, I do care what things turn out like. I don't, I don't wanna do everything all willy-nilly. I do take pride in my work. I'm just trying to learn and set a good example of not being too hard on yourself and not stressing out over the small things that aren't important anyways. And I figure if I'm stressing out over them all the time, that I'm not setting a good example and I, it's really important to me to, you know, that's, that's my, my job as the head of the sisterhood here <laughs> is to remind you, yes, they are fancy molds. They were, uh, you can look back at the beginning of the video, but they're, they're these El Cheapos from Amazon. I think they were like, two dollars a set but it took them you know three weeks to get here from china so that's not exactly good for the u.s and not exactly the way that i usually do things but iod didn't have what i wanted at the time and uh i was in a hurry and i wanted to learn so we do what we got to do now do i do this one green y'all or do i do another kind of a teal one is there is there such thing as a green pumpkin y'all ever seen a green pumpkin I've probably never seen a teal pumpkin. Quit stressing, make it green. How about that? Awesome. The uh, I'm not gonna want to put a second coat on these unless I do it this way. But I've got so much white paint still left in my brush that it's uh, sort of blending down between the white and the green. Boy, when I hold it up there, it looks not near as good as it does to me with my bad eyes in person. <laughs> I can, when it's up there, I can see the magnification of the bits of orange that are still showing through. That's okay. I'm probably going to do one more of them in the, probably the skeleton key or the apothecary, probably the apothecary. I love that color. Because I got one more up there. Or either I can do it flat out in gold because I got the golden ticket up there. I really want to use that on the stem. Glad I used the chip brush because I'm really wanting to job it down in there to get good and 
in the little crevices of the styrofoam. this one with some orange peeking through or come back with some orange crush and put a little orange with it. I, I do like the uh, the green but it needs a little something something. This is almost dry. This is that original uh, Apothecary. What am I gonna do? I don't want no more green. This is my last one of these, but I have these too. Let me show you this real quick in case you gotta be in a hurry or something. These were really cute. They're slick. I am a little bit worried about that, but we're supposed to not have to prep, so we shall see. How it does on these little pumpkins. I'm guessing they're pumpkins. They kind of look like bell peppers right this minute. But they got some green ones and some red ones. They're going to be pumpkins to me. I'll probably make these a little fancier. Put a little gold on them here and there with the golden ticket. another one of these that same color. This will be my main thing. This green is very easy to cover over with the apothecary. this one and then I'm going to skeleton key that last one or white. I'm going to skeleton key. up on these little pumpkins with this chip brush. You know, I got all my good brushes out to my uh, uh, paint pixie brushes and all that, but I knew I was going to be beating up on these pumpkins, so that's whenever it's nice to have the chip brushes too. And I dipped back in there because now there's nothing on the tip of my brush but apothecary. If it had still had the fancy form for all, I would have poured more in my lid. I really am excited to see what kind of, you know, once these really dry and cure in about 30 days, how the finish feels on the outside of them compared to how it feels right now once the clay hardens. Okay. Got that 
one more little one. I'm going to do it in the skeleton key. You know, this makes me very happy. <laughs> Painting makes me very happy. I'm, I'm sincerely hope that what is meant for me in my lifetime is to continue to be able to do this for the rest of my life and to share it with other women my age who've spent their lives you know, thinking of others first and doing for others first. I sure, sure hope that I have found what was meant for me. Okay, I'm gonna, even though later on I'm gonna come back on here and put a second coat, this is not 100% dry. So, um, but I wanted to go ahead and put a little bit of layered chocolate on this uh, stem to see how it was going to look. That's how I opened mine. Let's see if that worked. That and brute force are the answer, yes. That's thick. It's almost all used up. It's one of my favorite colors. Okay, think, 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 woman. What are you going to do? That's awfully big, but that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this flat square brush here. Dampen it just a little. You know, and I don't touch the pumpkin with it, but what I was about to say, you know, whenever you have the stem on a pumpkin doesn't just come straight out like this. A stem on a pumpkin sort of has a little um, pointy edges here and there that go down onto the pumpkin itself. This is the one that has the big hole in the top where I poked the paintbrush through while ago trying to think I could hold it that way. So I've got to feel that. But, in actuality, can you see that? In actuality, this stem would need to come out just a little bit. I probably should have used a smaller, um, a smaller brush, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to come out just a tad and a point here and there around that, uh, around that stem in this upper portion. And then, later on, whenever I put my next coat of the apothecary on this one i'll sort of lightly go over that and go in and out of those crevices a little bit uh in a sort of a zigzag pattern to make the deepness showing that there is a little more to that stem than meets the eye so then let that show through What brushes do you use? I read some that the hair doesn't come off in the paint. I use, uh, and what I was pulling off the paint while ago wasn't a hair either. It was one of the, it was one of those little, uh, that little plastic thing that comes out of the tag where the tag was on there. I had one of those on my brush. But my artist brushes are varied. This one is Miller something. And this was just a chip brush from, uh, this one's from Dixie Bell. Uh, but the main brushes that I use for my painting all the time are these. Let me show you this real quick. And when you first start using them, they do a little bit uh, have 
the occasional hair that's going to come off in there but when you're working with this uh, clay based paint you can let that dry in there then come back and rub it after it's dry and that hair will come back out but it won't leave like a line the way it does in latex paint but I use these I use this one a lot this is a, a paint pixie number 12 I use uh, these probably the very most these are paint pixies these are number eight and I used, and I intended on just using this one today, and I and I decided to use the artist brushes instead. But this is the Paint Pixie uh, French Round, and that's good for getting deep up in crevices. Those are like my good brushes. Those are like that's what I'm going to be using on the piece of furniture here in a minute, when when there's you know more at stake than a dollar. Um, I'm going to be using these. But these brushes, I got. Uh, this is cheap Joe's art stuff, and this is uh, Interlock by Dynasty. These, the, well, this one obviously came from Cheap Joe's, but these all came from, uh, and, and I love these for acrylic painting. These came from uh, Dick Blick, and if you'll look back on my page, I have uh, a big Blick like post, and there's a link in there, and that's my affiliate link, and I get credit for telling you about it, but. Um, I do have a, an affiliate link for Paint Pixie, but uh, I, I believe that you're local, and if you are, we carry these at the store. Um, and we have, I believe, some of every size here. And the wax brushes are, let me show you that. The wax brushes look like this. This is my clear wax brush. And I have a clear wax, a white wax, and a dark wax so that I don't wonk up. Let me show you my dark one. See, here's my dark wax brush. And I wouldn't want to put that now in some clear wax and go on that piece of furniture and let that clear wax reactivate this dark wax and put dark where I don't want dark. And the the white is, is I just try to keep it pretty pure, but I don't use as much white as I do custom dark colors and, and clear colors. But I've used the heck out of these. I do love those. And those are Paint Pixie as well. We sell those here. I'm gonna let's see, grab one more brush. Where'd I put that one? And put a little bit of Golden Ticket on uh, on here. This isn't dry yet, but I'm gonna put it on there anyways, just so you can get a little bit of an idea of what that's gonna look like. And I just grabbed a handful of brushes. I did not grab anything intentionally good or bad. And this is the El Cheapo brush that comes like in a set from Michaels. I think I have a link to this somewhere in my supplies section that where like you get 25 brushes for $5.99 and this is just for ones that you know you're gonna abuse and you're not wanting to do something, uh, you know, perfect with and you know, if something happens and you forget it, you can chunk it. Cause I do, uh, like I was doing with that chip brush now and then I do abuse my brushes not my good brushes and I, I wash everything every night no matter what I mean I don't abuse abuse my cheaper ones but for goodness sakes man what did I do to this golden ticket this stuff is scarce it's it's like never available we have two and I actually you're welcome for the info we have two left that aren't in my stock and they're like in my office right now waiting for me to do a price check on them but um the manufacturer the company's been out diy has been out for months and months and months uh as far as full stock the minute that it gets in if your order is in that day it gets fulfilled but you know they don't do a back order so um you just have to wait that may not be meant for me to show you this today And it's not. Let me try one more thing. And I don't think either one of the two is budging any more than the other one. This is a liquid patina. And it's a, a nice shiny gold. Either this will work or it won't. Ah! Ta-da! And I did just shake this up a little bit. But it's a nice... It, it, it's antique looking, but it's bright at the same time. It's hard to explain. There's a lot of pigment to it. And I'm just going to... 
just lightly brush over a little bit of my stem there with it. Nothing too dramatic going on there. But just to give it a little bit of an extra finish in that area. See how that came out a little bit natural because you know what uh, even though I was going with brown instead of green the stem in a pumpkin if it's still in the pumpkin when you get it sort of has a tad of green and it sort of has a tad of brown but it also has already started to wilt a little bit and die a little bit and that's what the gold the golden ticket added to that that look and a little bit of the whimsy and fan, uh, you know fancy that's going to go with uh, once I put the molds on. So I'm excited about that. The paint has dried on this one. And I'm hoping that I can still, uh, it's hard as a rock. Um, so it, it's as bent as it's going to get. I'll either find a way to make it work on the pumpkin or I won't at this point. Uh, I will find something to work use it on. But uh, I'll pour some more of them whenever I get back after lunch. I appreciate y'all joining me uh, for my first coat of paint on these pumpkins. Watch for another video. If you've not joined my and you're interested, please share for one. It really helps my business whenever um, these can be shared. But also, um, thank you for the info. You're very welcome. But it, you know, that helps my business to grow. But it also, um, if you're interested in receiving a messenger alert every time I'm going to go live, if you look up the page a, a couple of posts, I keep it uh, at the top. There's a big Facebook logo. You just have to go in there and type in the word alerts. And there's an app called Mini Chat. And you reply to the post that they'll immediately send you on there and say you do want the alerts, you know, making sure that we're not spamming you. And uh, then you'll get a notification. I usually try at least 15 minutes ahead of time to give a quick alert and say, hey, I'm fixing to go live and do something. And you can look and see if you have time if you're interested. If not, there's always the replay. And uh, anytime you want to unsubscribe, there's always an unsubscribe in there. So it's, you know, we're not wanting to spam anything. But I do a tremendous amount of furniture painting, craft painting, canvas painting. Last night we did Christmas cards. Um, you know just basic simple Christmas cards and so I'm always trying I think we did we've done two flower arrangements I'm always just enjoying some girl time and it you know we can't always leave our families our homes our jobs and stuff like that and get together but to me I still feel like we're having girl time whenever I'm able to uh, to share this with y'all and I appreciate it and check back because I'll be doing more stuff to these pumpkins after they dry and I'll be prepared and have some glue and make some more of the molds. I definitely recommend this uh, amazing casting resin. I'll find a link for that and put in there for y'all. That I was so impressed with how that worked that that just really made my day. So <laughs> I appreciate y'all and let's see what's that say. You have a good day. Uh, Oh yes, that, thank you for sharing that, uh, Tanya. That that's what I've found the most is going on between people who who I'm sharing with is that they're sharing with their daughters, and some of them are doing you know projects together even if they don't live in the same town. Like the little uh, pig with the flowers in his mouth I did the other day. A mother and daughter both did that one, and the finger painting flowers. A mother and daughter both did that one, and 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 that makes me feel so cool that you know me sitting down to piddle with my stuff and sharing it with y'all inspires you to you know pick up something and go for it and enjoy yourself and and I'm definitely a girl's girl that's what I'm all about so I appreciate you and I'm glad you're sharing it with your daughter and I'll talk to you soon bye bye thank you Carlin I appreciate you